Welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 4, The Siege. Or was it Episode? Yeah, it's The Siege. We'll just say it with The Siege. Um, I've lost count. The show was good. This episode was good. I liked how Baby Yoda kind of got a jolt when he didn't listen to the Mando. The Mando's sipping up his helmet. I think that was because I think this might have been an episode that wasn't uh, douchebag Pascal. Um, Gina Carano and Carl Weathers being back in this. Her, her fight scenes are great. It's always good to see her doing fight scenes because Gina Carano knows how to do fight scenes. She's a mixed martial artist fighter. She's great at it too. Her acting is always it's raw and real that's what i excuse me that's what i like about her acting it's raw and it's real in this you know that she's a you know that she's a fighter you know that she's a rebel she's been through the shit and whatnot so it's believable when it comes to her performance other people might say she can't act worth shit me i think she does a very wonderful job acting because she keeps a sense of raw realism to it Especially when it comes to her fighting, because she knows how to fight in real life. Carl Weathers is always a joy to watch on screen. He does great job playing Grief Karga. Um, this is a, like I said, I enjoy The Mandalorian only because I see it as a fan fiction. It's a good story so far. Now, yes, there are several lore violations, like the whole Boba Fett armor and uh, Bogotan and all that other stuff. But you know what? This episode, it was a good filler. It was not too, or it was not too annoying. And I thought it was very good. <clears throat> Having Baby Yoda steal the cookies from that girl was, well, that was just kind of stupid on, or evil. Well, not evil, but it's meant for comedic purpose. I mean, what Baby Yoda wants, Baby Yoda gets. So it is kind of stupid that they did that. I mean, this kid is supposed to be learning. Well, he's going to be a Jedi, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, I knew that Ahsoka Tano wasn't going to show up in this episode. It was very clear with the name of the episode. I know what episode her she's going to show up in. It's called The Sorceress. I mean, it's very blatantly obvious which one it is. And I believe that is either the next one or the one after that. And now, that character that was uh, sent to help fix Mandalore or the Mando ship, the one that the alien that looked back, it's like, yeah, he can't be trusted. And basically, yeah, I knew that that was I knew he was gonna do some underhanded shit. I didn't know exactly what, but I basically knew that he was gonna do some underhanded shit. The deeper story of where, or the child being needed for whatever experiments Moff Gideon was doing, um, it's interesting and it keeps you wanting to know more, and it's leading to an ultimate confrontation because you find out at the end of this episode that this is going to have, or that there's a tracking beacon put on the ship. Now... I thought that that was a nice touch. The rebel pilot that came in that was part of the last season or last couple of, or two episodes ago. So yeah, I think this is four. But anyway, the la or him coming talking to Cara Dune, her saying I'm not a joiner blue and when he asks her, "Did you lose anyone during the whole Alderaan thing?" I actually, it's like, I lost everyone. And then she says, I lost everyone. And I thought that was pretty funny too. But it's true. A lot, everybody lost, or those who survived the destruction of Alderaan, they lost everyone and everything, unless their family was off world. So yeah, she's a loner in the galaxy because she lost everyone. And then he lays that metal down and you see her staring off after him. Like, hmm. So it makes you wonder, is she going to stay with Grief Karga as the Marshal? 
or is she going to potentially join the New Republic again as part of the New Republic's uh, military and whatnot? It, you see her clenching her fist as if she's in thought. It's like, now she's conflicted. That's the impression I got. But anyway, folks, objectively, the acting and all this stuff, this was actually a good one. I will put it up around a 9 out of 10 objective. The story was compelling. It kept you engaged. Subjectively, I'll give it a 5 out of 5. I enjoyed this episode. I really did. And I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, it is Disney Star Wars, but they did a good job with it. Showgoer, it's a 10 out of 10. It was enjoyable to watch. It kept me engaged. I wasn't bored. I enjoyed this episode. I absolutely loved that Baby Yoda, when they were flying up in the Razor Crest, Yee-hoo! it's like, wow, really? Awesome. And then Baby Yoda puking, that was cute. It's like, finally they put a little bit of babiness in there, man. I mean, the baby cooing and all that stuff, it's good, but when are you going to see a baby throw up in this damn shit? And I actually did it. And I'm like, okay then, there you go. Anyway, folks, that's going to be the review. Hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Did you enjoy this episode of The Mandalorian, uh, The Siege, or did you not like it because it's Disney Star Wars? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. This has been Orange Hat Reviews. Stay humble.